everybody. I'm Mark Chapardini of Go See Talk. We're here at Fantastic Fest. I'm here with Greg Bishop, Justin Wellborn, Marcel Sarmiento, and Nacho Vigalando. Guys, VHS was crazy as shit. Yeah. Um, it's the third leg in what's called the trilogy, and you know you guys went out with a bang. So uh, maybe we'll just start with uh, Greg, how you first got involved in this, and you know, tell a little bit about your segment. Sure. Uh, well, I got involved. Uh, Brad Niska and Chris White um, asked if I had anything to pitch for it. Um, I heard who was involved, and then I said yes immediately when I heard Nacho was involved and Marcel. And so um, my segment's about a magician's assistant who finds out that the magician she works for has been dabbling in black magic and has conjured a demon who's given magic powers in exchange for human souls. So mm -hmm. that's basically my segment. Uh, uh, yeah, they basically uh, Brad Niska, who created the whole franchise, came to me and said, hey, we think about doing a third one, but Adam and Simon uh, are, are off doing another movie that can't really be involved, so we need someone to uh, help put it together, and that also means you have to do the rap, you know, so mm -hmm. if you want to do it, if you want to do the rap, and I said, ah, you know, only if we can sort of do something different this time, and try to uh, expand on a little bit, and they were all down for that, and that's how I got involved. Awesome. So I received uh, an email from Brad Miska and um, Chris White, one of the sweetest emails I've ever received, uh, asking me to, to make one of the segments. And I said immediately, yes, I'm a big fan of the series. Or I answered that yes uh -huh. in 10 seconds, because um, I don't know. Um, so yes, I feel, I feel horrible that I am somehow the first uh, Spanish guy doing this thing. And um, I don't know. It's, um, I don't know if I'm able to make a movie, a feature film involving monster genitals, <laughs> and so, but um, I don't know if I'm brave enough to make that. But I'm so, I'm so, I'm so happy that I had a chance to make this in this <laughs> three. So yes, I, it's been. I feel like I'm a spoiled child because uh, everything I wrote on paper is on the screen. Oh, really? I have a relationship with the pro with the producers, with with you and um, and Brad and and um, all these people were amazing. From the beginning, so I didn't have to make bigger change. So it's like I don't know. It's like oblivion to me. This whole mm -hmm. process. Tell me what you tell about. It's a parallel monster. Oh, parallel monster. Yeah. So, okay, did I already, already mention the gentle monster? Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> that's very important. Yeah. Very important. So let's go back to the beginning of the story. Um, it's about a, a scientific who is working on a machine in his basement, and this machine opens a portal to an, a parallel universe, which seems to be the same as ours. So he faces his other self on the other side. So uh, then we make, um, I don't know, and then later comes the genital monsters. Twists. 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 Okay, parallel universes, genital monsters, you can feel something in the middle. Uh -huh. okay. <laughs> and you had uh, oh. uh, vicious circles? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, what, 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 what's it about? Oh, just, yeah. It was, yeah. Uh, yeah it's just, kind of interweaves. Yeah, yeah. It's the, the, it's, the, it's the wraparound, so it sort mm -hmm. of tries to take the sort of mythology set up by the first two movies and sort of throw it on the road, basically, and get it, mm -hmm. out, of the, get it out of the house, sort of get it away from tapes. And, uh, yeah, sort of this idea that uh, people who are trying to capture some sort of viral video, whether they know it or not, or somehow involved in that whole space, uh, kind of get what's coming to them. Mm -hmm. Well, it, it was really crazy because, you know, Nacho, I, um, I don't want to know what your nightmares look like because if that's what you, <laughs> what you put on film, I'm, I'm, I'm okay to stop there. But I, I love Tom Crime, so let's just stop being a fan right now. I'm going to tell you, man, I, I, I told him last night, but his segment seemed like the subtext of my entire last week. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, the last woman that I went out with, that's who you are. It's, it's genital monsters and Satan and some kind of unidentifiable bag in the living room. <laughs> Well, we just talked to the guys who did Bone Storm, and they yeah. had a couple different ideas for it. Um, what were some of the other concepts that you toyed with before you actually said, hey, this is going to pull the trigger on it? Anything? I, well, I had two ideas when they asked me to pitch. I had one that was like, I, I've been, you know, I've been always wanting to do a magician movie that gets, you know, supernatural powers. I, I, I read some article in 2007 with uh, David Copperfield, like they a fleece raid on his warehouse. And it ended up being nothing, but I was just like, that, that would be really interesting if, if a famous magician was actually making people disappear. He was like dabbling in black magic and found a way, and, and he was literally, you know, killing his assistants. And I kind of just was the springboard for the idea. 
uh, that that was the initial idea that I've kind of been playing around with. I didn't know if I was going to do a feature with it or, or what. And uh, I had another one that was a completely just found footage idea. And so, but they went with the magician ones. So I was like, cool, I'll turn that into a found footage movie somehow. So, you know, awesome. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was just inspired by this actual viral video that was that was online of some kid, you know, watching a police chase, and then all of a sudden it came by his house, and I thought like that could be a great sort of jumping on point to like get it out of the house and to uh, have that sort of chase seem to keep circling back around to people who are involved in these really disparate stories, mm -hmm. and somehow all come together and hopefully tie together all three movies in a weird way. Gotcha. Um, now, Justin, you were Dante the Great. That was really quite fun, actually. I, it, I'm not sure there's a little bit of levity to the series, but you kind of brought it with the, the magician's awesome. So, <laughs> did you do like did, what kind of references did you look at, or did you sort of make up your own your magic person? Um, well, a little of that, um, because you just kind of have to go with what you can actually do. Uh -huh. um, but I did I did like to watch a lot of the. The, the old school David Copperfield, the, the, the big stage magicians, rather than the Chris Angels or any of that kind of, I'm, I'm a hardcore street magician, you know? It, it had to have all that old school kind of flair. And before we actually left LA, we met up at the Magic Castle in LA and, you know, to, to watch a bunch of magic. It was the first time I'd ever been there. And we sat down for dinner, and right behind me was this big poster for Dante the Great, you know? I mean, just this. Magician of old, that and, and it just kind of seemed like a sign where you're like, oh, so it's like rooms full of wands and special tricks, and you know, there's just a flair to that old school magician stuff that really gets um, and gets into you. Mm -hmm. It's hugely theatrical, and I think Dante always wanted to be theatrical, and so once he kind of gained these powers, that only and only amplified. And as far as the humor, I think the humor was all over it anyway. It reminded me a lot of one of those uh, old DC comics, mm -hmm. you know, some of the Tales yeah. of the Dark Side, that kind of yeah. stuff, where you're like, there's a bit of irony in the fact <laughs> that at the end, this is how he meets yeah. his end, you know what I mean? It's all that kind of stuff, so, yeah. yeah. Now, it was really cool, the, the effects kept building and got crazy, the whole SWAT team battle. Talk about how you did this, the effects where the, uh, you were fighting the girl on the wall, where you kind of came up and You've, um, it was like all the, the brick CMU stuff, you know, maybe talk about that, that scene. Uh, well, everything, uh, I like shooting, at least all the pyro and everything, I like shooting all that stuff practical as much as possible. Like, you know, I mean, we lit a guy on fire, we like, there's blanks in the guns, you know. There's a, there's a, mm -hmm. The thing, we're like, we're dealing with really tight budgets, but I always kind of, I don't like, I don't like skimping there. Because you, you can tell when somebody is shooting a gun, but they're not really shooting a gun, you're adding a flashlight, it just doesn't look right to me. So I try to get everything as much as possible on set and only enhance it if I have to. So, I mean, all the, you know, all the stuff on the walls, with, you know, with all the wire work and, mm -hmm. and you know, uh, I think you guys trained for a couple days and Ooh. am I having a heart attack? Did everybody else <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm everybody coming, Wheezy! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> for the remainder of this interview, we'll be specifically in the dark. Um, uh, so yeah, it was, it, was, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Uh, I, I enjoyed that stuff a lot. Can I address that just really quickly? Because we we, we always uh, yeah. You want to keep going? Maybe we should. Remark yeah. Them all. Do you see anything? I don't see anything. I mean, like, no. outlines. Okay. I mean, that went from that movie into this movie. We've been doing practical effects together in our movies for a long time um, because the CG was. That was the extra, you know, that was the extra stuff we had to do. So kind of going into it, we knew there was going to be a huge amount of the practical stuff. We didn't know exactly how we were going to do it all, but, you know, um, we've worked with Mills on Sugar since, you know, Greg's first movie, Other Side, and stuff like that. And so to find myself crawling up a wall in a harness was nothing new specifically to me, but it very much was to Emmy where, where you're like, and now we're going to have... Dubs flying on the thing. <laughs> this was the first one where we actually had live animals. That was the hardest stunt. It was like, don't hurt the bunny. You know? <laughs> really? Yeah, but you went there. <laughs> you went uh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Kill now, the then March said with um, Vicious Circles, it was a lot of outside work. And, you know, maybe talk about the logistics of, uh, you know, choreographing the chaos of the cop cars and the bikes and the difficulties of that. There was that one part where the guy's getting dragged behind so the, the, uh, the ice cream truck. And, oh, man. Oh, not very yeah. <laughs> For real. Yeah, it was hard. I mean, I've, I've never done sort of chase stuff, and uh, you know, we were we were confined to LA, and you know, LA's got great people, but it, there's also costs to that. Uh, you know, which uh, I think some of these other guys can say, like, you can, you can 
save some money when you're shooting somewhere else. So we had to like close off streets, even just to have a car drive down a road at 30 miles an hour. So it was actually really hard because you know, we shot for four days, overnight, um, all night, on the shortest nights of the year. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, bad choice, but we had to shoot it. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was hard, um, you know, and that one, where the guys getting his legs dragged, uh, we specifically picked sort of a freeway overpass, which had like four freeways crossing over each other. They all had these sodium halogen lights. And that one night, uh, a transformer blew and they all were out. So we had no lights. So we were like panicking. So that, I'm glad people could even see anything. Uh -huh. that, uh, it was hardcore. Uh, yeah. Oh. It's interesting. And then, and then like the, the uh, I mean, just do you want to know the, the Michigash, like the, the guys that we rented the police cars from said, you know, we paid a price. And I said, oh, by the way, if you turn the corner too too fast and you tear the tires at all, we're going to charge you another $1,000. Oh, and then the ice cream truck, we found out when it, when it arrived, it could only go 20 miles an hour, you know, without breaking down. So it's like, you know, that's the kind of stuff I think when you're doing this kind of thing, you only have three and a half days, you're like, okay, well, hmm. Yeah. I, that's why we hired stuntmen. They like tear right. around corners. Now we can't because that'll cost us five thousand dollars. So it's, it's that kind of stuff. So yeah, I don't know. Filmmaking. <laughs> I was just gonna add to that. That's that's always the kind of the hidden. And, and, you know, audience go see the movie and they're kind of like, oh, it's you know, why didn't they do this or do that? And it's like sometimes it's like you're lucky you even got an image on film. Like it's <laughs> lucky you see anything at all in this movie because of this happened and you have to like. It's all about those kind of last minute decisions when the sun's going down and yeah. or, or when you know the car doesn't run and you're like what do you do you, you, you have to change it up and, and, and make it work somehow the worst part is, no, is it doesn't matter like to an audience you know like yeah. it just has to work that's yeah. it yeah. And, and then Result. You know, no one wants to hear about like <laughs> what happened yeah. to this because yeah. who cares like so it just has to work and uh, so you know when it doesn't work I think that's sometimes you're like oh yeah. god I know yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. Well, Nacho, your scene, your uh, sequence was pretty much all indoors, save for the, the street. Um, but each of these segments, there was only four segments, plus the one that interwove. Uh, were you able to use more time better and to create these environments? Because one of the things I really liked about the, um, the, the, set, the segment is that it's very claustrophobic, and you do real well with, with close angles. Mm -hmm. So were you able to do more with more time and establishing you know, the, uh, the environment better? No, that's not the thing. I think that if you're writing a 20 page story, uh, you try to do your best into um, adapting. No, you're not adapting the story to the time you have. Okay. You are writing a story that takes only 20 minutes of your life. But some people tend to say that when they talk about short films, they think that uh, it's um, it's um, a special work, it's a special skill to tell a story in just uh, 50 minutes. But the thing is, uh, uh, if that it, in the, in the best case scenario, that story doesn't doesn't need more. So if I if I if I shoot this story into a future film, I have to change the stuff because the whole nature of the of the narrative will be different. Mm -hmm. So I have to be honest. In, in in my case, I think that's what it has to be told. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well, what what kind of constraints were you guys put under creatively? Because when we talked to the Bone Storm guys, they said that as long as their skit didn't sound or look anything like yours, you guys could do whatever you want. Was that the case? Yeah, I mean, basically, people submitted things, and, and I mean, like Justin Aaron had a great one, which I which I thought was awesome, which was a I don't know, they told you like a uh, sky parachuting skydiving yeah, yeah. thing, which uh -huh. I mean, I, I don't know why they said they could, they couldn't do that, but but yeah, basically, if something sounded too similar to someone else's. You had to just they all had to be just different enough, couldn't have the same sort of elements. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was just gonna say, like before I started writing mine, I, I think I read the raps, and I was like, oh, okay. Don't add a car chase, you know. It's like yeah. car chases covered. Covered. Right? <laughs> Don't add a car chase. Should be okay. Gotcha. Yeah, I mean, one concern just as funny is like just if someone had police in there, like your yeah. your SWAT teams was like, ooh, well, Marcel has police chasing, so we ha is it okay to have police in the other one? And it was always a big debate amongst like Brad and Clinton and all those guys. So. Yeah. Well, when it comes to um, pushing your vision and trying to get everything that you want into the story. Um, at what point do you just say, okay, this is enough, or maybe this is too much, or is, did you guys want to go more over the top? Because I mean, that's what's great about the series. It really it goes for the goes for the throat, so to speak. So, is there anything else that you want to try to put in? Well, uh, I mean, we threw it all at the wall. I mean, we threw it at the wall. I mean, it's <laughs> like, like I said, I mean, it's like it was everything we could do in the time we had. I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. if I had another day. Yeah. <laughs> I would have shot yeah. more. Earthquake! I mean, yeah, I would have shot more. I mean, there's more written. I think at one point there was a tiger written in it. Oh, yeah. I, was so, <laughs> I was so mad! 
that. And like, oh, I was promised a tiger, and we did not get the tiger. But yeah, that's, that's yeah. Nice. I was close to have a tiger in mind too. Uh, <laughs> yeah, such a coincidence. Yeah. I was, I was, I was for real. Yeah, I, was, I wanted a tiger too. Just in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> I'm okay. I'm okay with my. I'm okay, I'm okay with my. What, 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 by the way, what is the proper way of saying it? Genital, genital monster or monster genitals? Either one, so either one because, because they're genital equally monster. horrible. <laughs> <laughs> genital monster is a, is a funnier way. Genital, genital monster. Yeah. monster. I love your, I but love monster genitals sounds like... Huge! I mean, you know, you live in the way. Well, guys, they say that this is the end of the trilogy, but have you heard anything about another one? Oh. And, is, and? Uh, I mean, I think after the second one, they also thought maybe it was the end of the trilogy because it's so, it's sort of um, these things take a bit of a toll because there's no there's sort of no money. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, you know, I would say never say never. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was we, I was saying this in yesterday when we were recording the commentary. I want this saga to be uh, to have uh, ten more feature films yeah. or so because uh, uh, it's getting it's getting crazier, it's getting more insane, it's getting more over the top. So I, I, I don't know. I wish I wish. Uh, in a, in a future, we can buy the, the VHS uh, Blu-ray set and <laughs> it's as long as the James Bond one. Yeah, <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah, I was going to say, that, like, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to 4, I'm looking forward to part 5, and it's just, they're movies that uh, don't exist otherwise. I mean, I don't know if these stories would be told in any other way. You know? it's because it's like, in the short form. You know, yeah. short stories are some of my favorite things. Clive Barker's Books of Blood, yeah. things like that, where you're like, that doesn't work in a 500 page book. That works in 20 pages yeah. so well, you know? Mm -hmm. and same thing. Yeah. Excellent. Well, guys, it was a tremendous way to top off the evening last night. Thanks so much and congratulations. Thank you for that. Thanks, brother.